What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So this week the quick tip that we're going to talk about is how to create custom materials in SketchUp using images. So let's, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing is uh, SketchUp already has a pretty good library of built-in materials um, that you can access by going over here into your tray. But in this case sometimes it doesn't have exactly what you're looking for. Um, so you want to bring in like a custom material or something like that to help your model look a certain way. And so there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, specifically the way that we're going to do it though is we're going to come in here and we're going to use file and import. So the other way you could do this is you could actually come in here and create a material over here. But there's a piece of this step that I like with the file import method. And so what we're going to do is you're just going to find an image on your computer. So um, in this case, I have a couple different texture image that I've, images that I've downloaded from a couple different websites. And um, there's a lot of different websites out there with textures that you can download. I know SketchupTexture.com is one of them. Uh, SketchUp Texture Club is one of them that I've used before. Uh, there's even some uh, materials in the 3D warehouse that you can download. In this case, these are just a couple of uh, materials that I downloaded from, I believe this one was SketchUp Texture Club. And so they're just image files that you can import into your, um, into your model. Um, so if I was to open up this image, for example, basically it's just more of a like higher resolution, like stone image, just like this. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use file import and then I'm going to navigate to the folder that I have for materials and it's a good idea to go ahead and set up some folders for custom materials that you want to use so like for example this is my materials section um, that I have on my hard drive and basically I've kind of broken this up and organized it by material, so I have some different wood textures in here, I've got some different metal textures in here, stuff like that. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to select an image. So in this case I'm going to select this wall cladding stone, and I'm going to select use image as texture. So it's the second little box right in here, and I'm going to click import. And you can see what that's going to do is that's going to bring in this image, and you can see how there's a little blue point on the corner here. So what the blue point is, is that's asking you where you want your base point to be for the image. So if it's basically saying, where do you want me to put this? So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this image over here to this corner and click once. And you can see what that does is that adjusts the size of the image in here. So what that means is now I can come in here and I can adjust how big this image is going to be. So, and that's going to get pretty important. Um, not, not only to fill this in and make it look the way that I want it to look, because I can select uh, the different sizes, but also when you're working with textures, you want to make sure that you import them in a way that makes sense. So you can see how at the top of this image, there's a little extra stone at the very top. I don't necessarily want that showing, and so what I can do is I can move my mouse until um, the top of this stone piece kind of aligns with the top with uh, this little cap that would be on here. So that way this looks really natural. So you can see how this starts off with stone, ends with stone. So you don't want this to have just like this much stone on top of the texture in here. But now that I've kind of brought that in, what I can do is I can adjust that using the materials section. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool. So it's gonna be the sample paint tool. And you can just click on it and you can select your material just like this. And then you can come in here and you can edit that. So you can come in here and you can call this like new stone texture or whatever you wanna call that. Um, you can come in here with the edit section and adjust the sizing and everything else. Um, so you can actually bring this in as a like real texture into SketchUp. And you can see how if I go to my in model section of my materials section, this actually shows up in here as new stone texture. So then you can take this texture and you can apply it to all these different faces in here. So you can see how it's kind of a smooth texture all the way around and everything else. So, And then the other thing you can do is you can also come in here and you can edit the height if you really want to. So like for example, if you don't necessarily like the way this looks, you could come in here and say, no, this is just gonna be a five foot by five foot tile. And you can see how it kind of adjusts the size of the texture. So if I was to make it four foot by four foot, it would make the stones smaller. You know, if I was to go to a two foot by two foot, it starts getting really small, but it starts looking kind of silly. So. Um, you can definitely come in here and once you've kind of got this in here the way that you want it, 
just like this so once you've got it kind of sized the way that you want it and it looks the way that you want it to be what you can do is you can right click on this texture now that you've got it in here the way that you want it and you can actually click save as and so when you save it it's going to save this as an skm material or an skm file which is a sketchup material file so you can go ahead and find that folder where you had this and you can just go ahead and come in here name it whatever you want and then hit save and so when you do that now what you can do is basically in any model you can either import that as an image but you can also if you have like multiple files in a folder you can import them as a collection so like for example I have two different SketchUp materials in this metal section so if I select this folder both the SketchUp materials that are in that metal section will show up in here down at the bottom so same thing if I go in here and I say open or create a selection and I select my stone folder just like this you can see how stone's going to show up at the bottom of this and any SketchUp material textures that I have in here that are actually saved as SKM files will show up in this model. So like for example if I was to come in here and I was to open another version or another window of SketchUp and then just create kind of a new face um, that I wanted to apply this material to um, all I would have to do is I would go into my materials section in SketchUp and I would go in here to open or create a collection and I would find my folder so I would select the stone folder and I would click select folder and what that's going to do is now that's going to show up in here in my materials so now I can apply this stone texture basically any model that I import this into so you can kind of build up your own custom material library by doing this so this is a really powerful way um, to come in here and do this and one thing to note when you're downloading textures is just make sure you're downloading textures that are seamless because otherwise what will happen is basically SketchUp's kind of tiling this image over and over again and you can see how kind of bricks are repeating in here you can see you can see how those materials are repeating but if you don't download a seamless texture and it tiles it then it's gonna look funny because uh, the different pieces aren't going to tile properly and so you'll have a whole bunch of like image breaking and stuff like that in here and your images just won't be very good so just make sure you're downloading images that are labeled as seamless in order to bring them into your SketchUp model. So anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you creating custom materials? Um, have you had any issues with this in the past? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.